Okay folks, this is going to be a demonstration on how to build your circuit using Multisim Live, the online version, and how to take readings from it as well. So first things first, we'll need a power supply. You get DC voltage. And Stanley, we're installing it down the bottom. Get orientation correct, and you can change the value of it. In our example, we're going to use 200 volts. We need a switch. Single pole double throw, and again rotate to get the correct orientation. We're going to need a ground source. A resistor and obviously a capacitor as well. Under passive components, capacitor, and place it in. Also, you need to change the values here. So the resistor, in our example, is going to be 5k, and our capacitor is going to be 8 microfarads, for our example. Just use the uh, U key on your keyboard to get the, the micro symbol. And obviously changes that. Um, when you're able to connect up, Okay, so we now have effectively with the switch two separate circuits. When the switch is in this position, it's now going to charge up through the outer box, if you will. And then when we change the switch to the inward position, the battery, so the, the supply is now taken out of it. And now what we have is the capacitor effectively acting like the battery and now discharging through the, uh, the resistor. Okay, so now we have it set up, we want to be able to take results from our graph. So, we have a split screen here so we can see both. Uh, we're waiting on data because we've never turned it on yet. Uh, or you can go in the grapher by itself, which will show the entire thing. So we need to be able to determine where we're taking the information from, and what we want to know is the voltage that is rising across the capacitor. So go to your analysis and annotation section. You want voltage. Pick somewhere in between the two components and then you can straight away go to add reference point directly afterwards is perfectly fine or anywhere along the, the zero volt line there up to the switch up to the negative side of the battery or all the way up through to the negative side of the capacitor like anywhere along that zero line is perfectly fine for that and then if I change over to the split screen and I hit play You see the green line comes up, which is the, the voltage we're measuring, very, very low. And then if I operate the switch, it rises up and sort of disappears out of the screen. So we need to be able to adjust our settings. So I'll let it run for a second or so, just so it fully charges up. I'll stop my circuit at that point. I will go to grapher completely, just so we have a larger screen to work with. And now, using my mouse, I'm able to... I can use left click, drag and drop, drag across and change the time. I can scroll using the mouse wheel in and out. So uh, I'm scrolling back the way effectively where I see the point at which I can get back to the start of mine. I can go over to my Y axis and I can use the scroll again to basically change how um, the scale is working. So I actually can see all of the uh, the values that I need. I know it's going to rise up to 200 volts, so I need to be able to do that. So I'm still just continuing to scroll and scroll until it comes into view, and then I just adjust it slightly. Put my zero volt down lower. And that's probably as close as I'm going to get to getting as large as possible. And then back onto my x-axis, I can scroll 
to stretch that out a little bit to make it easier to view. That seems pretty clear there. So if I hover it there, so nothing really need to be played with for settings as such. You're just using your mouse wheel to scroll um, on the x-axis first of all to compact it all in, uh, so you can see the start of your line. I went over to my y-axis y and I used the scroll feature just so I could see up to 200 volts. And then I've just adjusted by using the left click and moving it around. So hold the left click button and move it left and right and it literally just moves on your page for you. Now I do need to put in a few lines, uh, so you need to go over to your settings over here. And I'm looking to find cursors. And I can have them either on the x-axis, like so, or I could place them on the y-axis. Okay, but the one we want is our x-axis. Now, what I recommend doing is, again, closing that out of the way, just so you have a larger space to look at. And then you can use that to drag and move. And you see the small diamond sort of shape there. And then down the bottom, 307.28 milliseconds, you can move that along you see your time changing okay what you're trying to do here is get it to the point at which it just begins to rise which looks to be roughly there which is 313.08 milliseconds so from there what you're looking to do then is increase your time constant now your time constant in your your assessment will be given to you at that point so you don't really need to calculate it uh, so for us it's going to be slightly different and uh, to do that, um, I just need to adjust mine, and I'm just going to say mine's going to be uh, 40 milliseconds. I can move my cursor, the C2 cursor, left and right, just by, by dragging and dropping. And you can see down the bottom here, you've got delta X, which means the difference in X. So what we're able to do is see when I get to 40 milliseconds. So I lower that down and try and get as close as I can. There's 40.004 milliseconds, which is pretty close, it's very close for us. And what I'm now able to do is read off from that. So there's my T equals zero point, which is 200 picovolts, which is basically nothing. And then uh, after the first time constant, I'm just going to pretend that it's 40 milliseconds in this instance, that I'm going to have 125.5 volts. Okay, so that's how you take your first two readings. Now, if I wanted to go to my second reading, well, the first, second, call it the third, I need to increase that to about 80 milliseconds. I'll double that again. So I'll increase, just move it up and try and set that down as close to 80 milliseconds as you can. And we've got 80.008. And then we read the value here of cursor 2, which is 172.59 volts. And we're able to then put that into our Excel spread. <clears throat> which will eventually make us our our graph for us. Okay, and that's how you take readings from this particular graph.